For it is that we've come upon the revival season in Hopewell, Mississippi. Lord, send a revival. Change it up, 2019. Soprano, start us out. Send a revival. Lord. Lord, send. Lord, send me. Help me out, boy.
you all do at least two. Yeah. At least two.
I admire your dad. See why I say you just seem like my dad. You don't get mad if I call him my dad, would you? He said, no, my dad ain't gonna mind. He'll share. I said, okay, well, how you doing, dad? <laughs> now I got it out my sister. To you old will and all your many friends. My people, God bless you. Oh, God bless you. First lady Paul Star, he good the girl. You try to get It's a beautiful day. It's a beautiful day. Listen, I want you to grab your Bibles quickly. Let's go to the book of Mark. We're going to Mark. Uh, look at verse 35. Book of Mark. The Gospel of Mark. Chapter 4. Verse 35. Man, it was pretty rough. Y'all look at chapter 35. Mark 4, I'm kind of calling between two messages. We're going to try to see if this is the one. So we're going to hang it out. Mark 4, verse 35. We have to want you to say amen. Amen. sent away the multitude, they took him, even as he was in the ship, and there were also many, there were also with him other little ships. And there was a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ships, so that it was now full, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awaked him, and said unto him, Master, carest thou not that you perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind, said unto the seas, Peace, be still. Right. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You may be seated. God, I thank you for this opportunity. I pray, Father, for your strength. I cannot do this without you, but I am reminded of what you said in your word. You should take on all the Lord to say, and an hour shall be given. So, Lord, give us such an hour as I decrease. I pray, I pray that you increase within me, but also, God, I pray that you touch your people, that their eyes and ears of understanding will come open and we're all able to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. This we believe done to you and ask me. So, we do ask in Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. I will talk to you very briefly if you can today from this particular topic. The God that cares. I want you to touch about five people and just explain it to us that He is the God that cares. I will make, somebody, make sure somebody knows that. Say it with conviction. He is the God that cares. He is the God that cares. It's important that we understand that whenever we watch Jesus in ministry, that Jesus is God's prime example of what He desires for us. Yes. Yeah, all right. Jesus is God's glory in men. It is those of us who walk as men and have born at the similitude of Adam that does not know how to express the righteousness of God, except God shows us how to do it. So it's important for us to understand that when Jesus comes, he did not just come to die for us, but he also comes to live for us. Right. It is his life that is substituted for our life. It is God saying within your imperfections, I know you could not do what I require you to do. Be done. So grace says to us, I'm going to do it for you and afford it to you as if you did it for yourself. Amen. And any time that we, we see Jesus minister and we keep that in mind, you will watch miracles open up and your eyes will be will revelate to what God is actually intending in his word. I watched Jesus come and he just addressed both to me. He is just fed 5,000. There are so many people who are blessed by his ministry that they're following him in droves. But Jesus always has to have a moment of solitude to himself. So he takes his avenue of getting ready to go over in the Nazareth, but he uses it as a teaching tool for his disciples. He knows that his disciples are not aware of what's about to happen. But he allows them to understand through the, the, the logos, or the, the, the declared word that he's about to take place. He teaches them that before they even get in the 
ship. They, they would just trust what he says. All right. The word that he says is, let's get in the ship and go to the other side. Other side. He has already declared by his preeminence yeah. uh -huh. what's about to take place. Okay. But when you are followers of him and you don't quite know who he is, uh -huh. you follow with an inquisitive mind, but not according to your knowledge. Uh -huh. So you're following him and hoping that faith reveals who he is to us while we yet follow. Yeah. If you can handle this today, everybody in church is doing the same thing. Yeah. We're all saved by the same grace by our Savior. We're all getting to know before our expiration date comes. All right. It makes no difference how old you are, how long you've been in it. You are still trying to figure out just who this Jesus is. Yeah. It's something about life that allows him to become more vibrant, more illuminating when he is approached, when we are approaching him. And the one thing that I found that God uses that catapults the believers understanding of who Jesus is, that everybody in this in this room too have to come past. And that's a stone. It's amazing how God uses storms to make itself relevant in our lives. Most of us, if we didn't have a storm, none of us would be saved. That's us going through something to point us toward a need of the greater. If God would have not allowed you to be in a storm, you would have thought it would have been by your power. You would have thought it would have been by your might. And you would have rejected the Spirit of the Lord. But it seems that how some storms come up on us, they allow us to see that they are bigger than us. And it shows us a need for a higher power in our life. Jesus is setting his disciples up. Jesus' prediction is go to the other side. Jesus is transitioning in the ship while sleep, preparing himself for the demonic man when he gets to Ganesha. Because he says there's a ministry there waiting on him. And the only thing that he has to do is rest in who he is. But the problem with the disciples are they're in the ship with him and they're clueless to the magnitude of who they they're riding with. They see him as a man of God, but he's bigger than anything that they can fathom. They can see him as a prophet, but yet he's higher than a prophet. They heard of angels, but yet he's higher than the angel. Jesus is bigger than even the, the, the finite mind can comprehend. So it takes storms. I, I'm not happy about storms. I don't like storms. I hate going through storms. But there's something about storms that point him out to the believer. You know you didn't really have a good hallelujah until after a storm. You didn't have a good praise until after a storm. But the hell that you go through will make you start saying thank you for the things you do. Matter of fact, a storm will make you look at a blessing different. When you sit there, it takes a whole lot to impress you. But when you're going through some stuff and you find out in the midst of what you're going through, could nobody do you like Jesus? Then all of a sudden, the smallest thing becomes amplified in Christ. In other words, some of us in here are sitting on back time. You owe God and you had not paid him yet. And you trying to figure out what a man robbed God. I'll tell you how you robbed him. Most of us think about time and offering. And you start thinking about the two niggas you want to build together. But can I share with you your praise as an offering? You sit up in here, you wake up a preacher that cut flips with you. You got to sweat yourself crazy just to get you to say thank you for the value of the God you say you serve. But if you really knew him like you supposed to know him, your children. 
that he's attacking your finances because he's trying to show you if he can break you before you really figure out who he is. He can control you. But there are five or six of you in here that said the devil that went too far. He messed around and let you figure out who he is. Now you got power. You didn't even know you had. You walk in his faith. You didn't know you could walk in. And you're doing things that you didn't even know that you could do. All because of the power of the name of Jesus. Jesus told them boys that we are fixing to get ready to go on the other side. Watch this. The boys took it as normal. And because they all, most of them were fishermen, they were used to boats. So they knew about navigating. Even those who knew about boats, they knew storms. When storm come, they would go to the shore. But Jesus didn't say if a storm come, we have to go back. He had already declared that they're going to the other side. So now whether they want to go or not, even they could even roll the boat back if they wanted to, because even the ship uh, is under the auspice of his command. Uh, and if Jesus told the ship go to the other side, the boat would have went without a rope. Uh, they didn't even have to walk, it would have been anyway. Uh, because Jesus had declared that the only thing uh, that was in the ship was clueless was the disciples. Uh, and they're sitting there trying to figure out what's the next move. Uh, now, as long as life keeps going as normal, we can act like we know even when we don't know. That's what I love about church today. We got a lot of folk acting like you know when you don't know, and you don't know whether you know until the storm comes. Oh, that that's when we really see your authentication. Most folk can keep their tongue until they get heated. We didn't know you cussed until you got into a storm. We didn't know you showed up until you got into a storm. Some storms really bring out the authenticity of the believer. We know where you at. You ain't can't hide no more when the storm comes. Jesus is in the ship in the hiding part. The reason why he is asleep, he is resting in what he's saying. I'd be glad when the church learns how to do that. We heard what the Lord said, but yet still we want to apply our faith to it. And we get all uh, critical in, in our un unwailing diary and in our, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Unwailing, but yet still we're, we're in our doubt season. And we can't allow God to just control our mind because in order to do I have to heal myself. And most of us are too busy struggling with whether or not I want to do it or are we going to let God do it. And Jesus had already rested in it. Since, listen, since everything uh, that is under the creation was made by him. Let me see if I can care to be like this. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The same was in the same was in the beginning with God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things that were made were made by him, and there was not anything made without him that was made. In him was life, and the life is the light of man. In him was life, and the light and that light is the light of man. Now watch this. And the word became flesh, verse 14. And he dwelt among us, and we beheld him as the only begotten of the Father. So the same that was in the beginning is the creator of the thing he's in. I, I, I watch God. It's amazing how God does it. He builds the mold, builds the model, and then steps in and operates it. I wish I had some help with that. He steps down. And listen, even though the only one there is the only one that's clueless to the situation is man. And because man is caught up in sin, he lost his position with God. So he's no longer upright with God. He's no longer righteous with God. He's no longer in sync with God. He's no longer spiritual with God. Because he's made after the similitude of Adam. In other words, everything he does comes back to his daddy. And if his daddy was a sinner, that means you were born a sinner. Y'all got to look at me. I just keep going. And since I was born into sin, it didn't take long for my mother's womb to shake me into iniquity. And when I come out, I come out knowing how to lie. I come out knowing how to cheat. I, know, I come out knowing how to run around. You didn't have to teach me that. I learned it from birth because I was born after the similitude of my daddy. You just can't have an epiphany. You need to be born again. So the neighbor said, you got to be born again. Jesus as creator, y'all got to understand it. Jesus as creator has to condense himself in humanity. He cannot reveal his divinity. He, he condenses himself in humanity that he might be palatable to the Lord. While he's yet in the ship with them and they're getting ready to go to the other side, Jesus is resting in what he says. Jesus is resting in what he said. A storm couldn't stop him. I wish I had more help. A storm can't stop the commander of the storm. The seas can't stop the creator of the sea. The wind can't stop the creator of the wind. This is creation on creation. And while they're yet in the ship, 
and they're trying to comprehend what's going on. They're trying to use their several abilities in the things that they know. In other words, how you grew up, what mom and them taught you, all the skills and the isms that you used to operate by. They're trying to use how they grew up to fight this storm. The winds was boisterous and the seas were rolling. They were trying to use their own techniques to accomplish something that they could not because they did not and know not then know how to rest in what the Lord said. Then the Lord said, go to the other side. When they saw a little turmoil, they thought that to get up and fight the storm was what they were supposed to do. But Jesus was saying, if you would have followed me when I laid down, you should have laid down. When you see me sleep, you should have slept. But because the storm saw that we were in sync, it was only after fear. And since it seen I couldn't fear, it was chasing fear. And since you're sitting over the scared of every little thing that rolls, that's why storms come. Because you can't walk with Jesus and be a coward. I wish I had some victory to be a Gideon. That's what's wrong with the church today. We got too many scared folk in the church. Scared the same. Scared to say that, scared to live this way. But everybody got an opinion on something that nobody wants to do. So, I just let that sit a little bit. You can pass that little bit that way don't touch it anyway. So now, here it is. Jesus had already laid the command, he goes to sleep. Now the disciples are up and they're covered about doing what they know how to do. As expert boots, they have fought storms before. They have fought winds before. Their terminology was: when a storm rises and you see it coming, hurry up and get back to the shore. Watch this. Watch this. Seek safety back where you come from. Jesus said, no, 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 that ain't the way this thing works. When you get ready to deal with storms, this ain't about stop. I know some of y'all are very conservative. When you see storms coming, you're riding down the road. First thing you do, you pull over to the shoulder of the road, and you sit there, and you ride that storm out. But there are some folk who done been through a few storms. What you done been through a few times. You know you can't drive as fast as you want to drive. You can't run like you ain't got good sin. But if you slow it down, if you slow it down and pace yourself, you will find out the storm won't last always. You will also find out the storm isn't as big as you blew it up to be. You will also find out that the storm can't mess with you if you're still moving. Touch it every time. Keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. Over stuff that don't look right. What you gotta pay close attention to is that you're not in the ship on your own accord. You're not in this ship because of your own command. You're not in this ship off of your own intuition. I'm in the ship because the Savior's in the ship. I wouldn't even be in it if he had told me to get in it. But if he told me to get in it, the least I can do is say, if you told me to get in it, I'm gonna wait on you to tell me get out of it. I ain't not ahead of time. I'm not gonna get ahead of you. In other words, if this storm is what it takes to bless me. I'm going to sit right here until the Lord do what he's got to do. That's what's wrong with a lot of us. We keep running before time. But if you just sit there and let the winds roll, if you sit there and let the winds blow, let the seas roll, and then turn around and say, Master, I heard what Peter's going to say down the road. Because Peter tells me that if I cast all of my cares upon him, he cares for me. So when Peter woke him up, he didn't get him up and say, Let Master, what you gonna do about this? He said, Master, cares not that I perish. In other words, I know you love me. I know you care about me. And I know you can do this thing. But I'm dealing with something that I cannot handle myself. And since I know that you care about all of us, I need you to know something. You go no further without waking you up. He says, Master, cares not. But you've been allowing the enemy to do whatever he wants to in your life. 
and you have never woke him up. You trying to impress him with your strength. I wish I had something to You thought you were going to get a button or some type of badge if Jesus woke up and he saw you stroking with the oil. Jesus said, no, nah, no, nah, you fight the stuff I'm sleeping in. What I'm trying to get you to see, if you learn how to lay down and rest in the situation, that's why he tells Israel, while Israel is discombobulated and they're still trying to worship through the old practices, and in Matthew 11 and 28, he says, listen to me, Israel, I know that you're trying to do worship on your own, and you're doing it with tainted sacrifices, but the real sacrifice is here, so he says unto them, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, what is he saying? He said, listen, church, I know you've been fighting trying to be right on your own, I know you've been trying to keep the law, I know you've been working the practices, but the best thing you need to understand, your best in God's eyesight is, is a filthy rag. What you need to understand, there is one that's on board that God set him on that on purpose. He didn't put it there that he might be able to make it. He put it there that we do not perish. I wish I had some help. Touch your neighbor and say, that's why he's on board. Touch your neighbor and say, that's why he's on board. He won't let you down. He's trying to bring you up. But when you can learn to hear the command of the Lord, it can save you a lot of trouble. When I see the storm, I don't get mad about the storm now. When I see the storm, I think about the command. Because the only reason why the storm is there is because the devil is trying to take my joy. He's trying to make the ride rough. But when I figured out that my God shall supply all of my needs, all I need from God is to know that me and him are okay. Watch this, I'm going to throw some at you, you probably didn't see here. Jesus gets up and he tells the soul, peace. Peace He does not tell the disciples, he tells the soul. In other words, he told what he himself had put together.
changes the whole dynamics of who he is to become a man. That he might, watch, watch this, he conform to our image. All right. That as we follow him, we conform to his image. All right. I ain't got time to just explain all of that now, but that's just the way the scripture is going to tell you. He became a man. Philippians 2 5, check that out. He became a man and took on the form of a servant. God himself. Yes, who comes down begotten to become son. Yeah, yeah. He knew no sin. So he couldn't be me to express me. Because that would be not his essence. He can't be sin when he can't sin. He cannot be sin. Because he can't sin. Are y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. So the man couldn't teach you to take him with sin. All right. All right. He had to be birthed of the Holy Ghost. Yes. So when he comes, watch this. He takes on the image of us. But he has to deal with us. All right. To feel with us. All right. We have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but all points he tempted just like you and I. But yet he was with us. He became me. For me. You know what he was saying? Alfred, we're on the boat to shore. Now get in. I got in the boat at the cross. And I'm crossing over to the other side. And he's telling me, Alfred, now listen. Road may get rocky. I'm used to it, so I'm going to give it now. I didn't realize how hellish church for world until I got in the boat. Man, I didn't know how cantankerous preachers was until I got in the room. Quiet members, good gracious, they'll cut your throat until I got in the room. Watch the turmoil in the storm. The storm indicates you ain't jumping out. He is not there for himself. He's there for us. And what does he declare? Watch this now. He doesn't get up and say, Thou art saved. He says, I'm going to stop the hindrance that I allow to make you see me like you should. We need y'all leave alone now. Leave alone. Soul, leave alone. So they can focus on me. Everything I go through, that's the last I can tell you, I think I'm through. Everything we go through in life that we call storms or redirections. Redirections and refocusing. It make you get back in the vein of keeping your eyes on him. It's so easy to drift off. I do it all the time. And the Lord said, hold up, you know, I ain't got that trouble right there. You took your eyes off of me and I gotta go send me, Lord. Jesus gets the boys in the ship and they go to Nazareth. That trip, they run him off. They run the Savior off because he heals a demonic boy. So few months pass. Jesus said, you know what, fellas? Get back in the ship. We can go to the other side again. But this time, he doesn't get in the boat. They're getting back to Nazareth. He stays in the mountain to pray. While they're in the ship, another storm come up. Now without Jesus, they got to use their faith to fight the storm. What does Jesus do? First time, he said, peace, be still. Shut the storm down. This time, he come walking across the storm. He's 
walk into Jesus. All I'm saying to you is this. He is the God who cares. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Stop focusing so much on the things you can't change. But focus on the game changing. Everybody stand in your feet. Here you go, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Try that on for a second. Can you just say that hallelujah? Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, uh, thank you, Jesus is good. When God has done something before you recent to show gratitude. But a hallelujah comes by that revelation. When you realize. Because the whole thing was pouring at them disciples coming together going, my God, what manner of man is this? That he can sleep in stuff that's got you crazy. What kind of man is this that can speak a word to my situation and it changed like that? Sound like somebody we really need to get to know. And it's good to know you. Today, I, I, I hope I haven't given you too long, but I do want to share this with you. None of this is effective to anybody who's not in the boat. You can't get this still standing on the shore. If you're not in the boat, you have not invested. What am I saying? I'm saying this. There's a lot of stuff that's being said and you haven't given your life to Christ. It's all doing like this to you. And I'm afraid for us because we keep catering to that. We see it going. Whoo. So we keep dissecting and dissecting and dissecting the word, trying to get you to. Whoo. Whoo. But except the man be born again, you can't see the kingdom. You're not saved, you're not going to get it. Why are you trying to get a biblical understanding that you haven't accepted the Savior? I believe in the principle of faith come by hearing. And hearing by the word. So you can look at me and go, oh, that's deep. And I'm going to say, yeah, it's spiritual. So if you didn't understand it, it's not my job to give you understanding. It's my job to preach and proclaim. God give it the understanding. You need the words, I'm sorry. Proverbs 2 and 6. God giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth comes the knowledge and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and all come from God. No matter how simple I make it, if you're not connected, you won't get it. No matter how deep it is, if you're connected, you have something the Holy Spirit can work with. If you're here today, and you're not saved, I want to address that quickly. I want you to defeat the enemy. Now, let's do it like this here. Let's go for prayer. Whatever you need, come quickly, quickly. Quickly, 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 quickly. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, come on.
the relationship to think that they can ask that question. Yeah. And when the storm first started and they knew that their first precept was to go back and Jesus didn't wake up, they waited until the scripture said the boat was not full. In other words, we always wait until we hit rock bottom before we say, Lord, I need you to help. I suggest to you this evening that you don't have to wait until you hit rock bottom. Once your eyes come open, you can call him right there. He will answer. I love Storm Chaser. For he even says anything to them. He says, first of all, let me get rid of your problem. Now watch this. Every one of you who are holding hands, this is problem of faith. Every man has been dealt a measure of it according to what Paul said. So if you have no faith, your faith is built by the word of God. But it's not valid in glory. Until you can apply what you believe to your life. That's when faith becomes fruit. As we begin to do that, sometimes we won't work. We won't do without the storm. Short story, and I think I could be through. I remember when grandma used to tell me, she said, son, I need you to get that tub. Go out there and pick me a bushel of peas. My mind, I'm going like, man, I don't want food, no peas, I don't want peas, no peas, I'm tired of going out there, I'm not doing all, y'all know how we do, I'm arguing, I'm arguing, and uh, I went out there, picked a couple of handfuls of the bucket, and come back lying, there's no peas out there, this is all I fight with, <laughs> she took the bucket, put a hand over there, and she, she had locked holes, because she couldn't see very well, so she put a hand in the bucket, and she said, boy, I know, good dog on wheels, there's more peas out there, they're full of that. She says, so you don't want work, that's what it is. Let me give you an incentive. In the middle. When she took a switch, it was about this long. And when she got through it, had this much left with it, I miraculously come over the bush with you. Now you see why we have stones. Because we won't do unless the Lord shake us. We won't move. to never leave you. He's just right there. And when you feel like the load has got too hard for you to bear, you'll step in All right. and begin to give you another tutoring All right. on your faith. That's right. what he does. Yeah. Let's pray. Now. Father, yeah. I am grateful for this opportunity to stand before your people and to share with them. I'm grateful, God, for such a leader that you've placed over this flock. I'm grateful, Lord, for his wife, his family. I'm grateful for the strength you have given him. And I pray, Father, for this church and its revival. I pray, Father, that the words will be spoken, the spirit will move in such a mighty way to all of those, Lord, who are in the boat with you, will be convicted, convinced, and converted into who you really are. And now, God, I ask you to open your flow such a mighty way. Somebody's linked up with somebody now, Lord, that's, that has secret burdens. They don't really want to let it be known that they are struggling on their relationship. But Lord, I pray that as they are touching that person, they will begin to understand that Jesus is on board. He is the master that cares. And if he told us to cast our cares, no need to let him rest in a situation when he was born into being my very earnest bearer. So we may cast our cares on him. Today, Lord, before we leave, we leave leaving our anxieties with you. We leave leaving our depression with you. Leaving, Lord, our discomfort with you. And believing, God, that you will move these things and take them away. We know it's done. So I send the people, my brother and sister, that's already done. We thank you, Father, as we give you glory, honor, and praise. It is within the mighty name of Jesus we pray. And we give you thanks. And the people of God shall be. Amen.